for now, we'll get comfortable whether you wanna start in a seated shape or if you wanna start laying down, whatever you want. So no right or wrong. I'm gonna start seated with a prop underneath my tailbone. Maybe you're doing that. If you're laying down, you might also have a prop for the head or tailbone or whatever you want. And you don't have to rush to complete stillness just yet. No need to close your eyes just yet. I'll tell you my little story for our, our focus for class and then I'll have us continue moving through. But um, so there's a little saying that I've recently learned probably like two or three years, uh, years ago, two or three weeks ago. And it was about this, um, here's like, it's like a joke story. So this guy goes to a monk, right? So he, he's looking for help. And he's asking about like a yoga and meditation practice. Like, how can I do it? How long am I supposed to do it? Et cetera, et cetera. And the monk responds, 20 minutes a day, you should have your practice. Whatever it is, you know, it could be your own thing, but make it 20 minutes a day. And the man says like, he gave this whole list of things that he has to do. And he's like, I don't have 20 minutes in a day to do this. And then the monk responds, okay, well then you do it for an hour. And that's like the punchline of the joke. So if you say that you don't have 10 minutes, if you don't have 20 minutes, if you don't have a half hour, then it's like you need it even longer than what you suspected, right? So how can we um, find our own service to our practice or our own devotion to our practice, whether it is 10 minutes, a half hour, an hour and 15, two hours, et cetera, et cetera. So in a certain way, we can almost pepper in the practice throughout our actions, both you know, on our mat and off of our mat. We can pepper in this experience of our practice. And we get to solidify that a lot within our yin. So then that's kind of how I'll, I'll guide us into practice with that type of mindset. So feel free to move around a little bit more within your seat until you're ready to close your eyes and come to stillness. Noticing the time of dedication. And I may have even shared that story before. But it's just interesting to think about again and again. It's, it's this constant reminder, right? Of carving out the time, holding the space for ourselves, whether it is that 10 minute, 20 minute hour time frame. So as we find our stillness and as we close our eyes, drawing our senses inward, begin to notice the space of the body, begin to notice the expansion of the breath, maybe noticing the gaze at the backs of the eyelids as we see what presents itself here. And within the container of our body, Let's notice this expansive space, this boundlessness within the boundary of the body. So it kind of feels almost like an oxymoron, but it's really just noticing both polarities. The container of maybe form, structure, boundary, whatever word you'd like to use. And then also noticing the other polarity, which is that boundlessness, that expansiveness without form, without structure. And how can we use both polarities to continue to enhance our practice? Or how can we use our polarities to understand our bodies? So as we come into that 20 minute practice, hour practice, whatever it may be, listening, observing, as we talk about these polarities, of form and formless. So with that in mind, let's come to find a few cleansing breaths. We'll inhale through the nose and open the lips to exhale. Again, like that, deep breath in and a deep breath out. <sighs> and 
One more time, full inhale. And complete exhale. And take a moment to come back to the natural breath. Noticing the warmth within the body, maybe even within the face. And then as we fully open up our practice, you might keep your hands relaxed where they are. You might bring one hand on the belly and one hand on the chest. You might even bring the hands into prayer. Right? So just choosing however you'd like to honor your practice. You might decide to take a cleansing breath again, or you might decide to join me with the sound of Om. Wherever you are, we're gonna take a deep breath in. Keeping the eyes closed, gently bow your chin towards the chest. Take a moment to allow the breath and the vibrations to settle within the heart space reverberating off of the walls of the inner body as they seal your intentions for practice. And then from here, you can relax your arms, relax your hands. You can slowly open the eyes if you'd like. We'll start our practice actually in our dove shape. So if you're laying down, you're welcome to stay. Dove is where we start with our knees bent, feet flat to the floor, and we open out our knee to the side. So, if I were to switch this way, coming to lay down, again, right, we start with the knees bent, but we're going to open the left knee out to the side. And then you'll just kind of come to the blade of the foot. It will relax wherever it wants. At that point, though, if you wanted to prop the knee or thigh with a pillow or blanket, you're welcome to, in addition to maybe propping your head or your tailbone, whatever you need. In the event that you want more sensation, then I would suggest walking this left foot underneath your right thigh. So it's just gonna travel underneath the right thigh. So instead of it being there, it's gonna go farther underneath the right thigh. <laughs> so from there, the left knee might be at a diagonal or the left knee might point forward. It just depends on where you take your left foot. So notice the ability to steer your sensation and find the best place to begin. And again, you might prop the thigh, you might prop the tailbone, you might prop the head. You can then relax your arms, whether they uh, soften down by the hips or reach up over the head. So that will be your choice. So really just do whatever is best for you, but you'll allow yourself to gravitate towards stillness, softening the eyes as we begin to arrive into the stretch. Noticing whether there's sensation in the outer thigh, inner thigh, top of the thigh, bottom of the thigh. No right or wrong place to feel the stretch because we wanna honor what the body is expressing. So within the container, of the shape of our body, within that structure, within that form. We're holding the space that we allow ourselves to breathe into. We're holding the space for ourselves where we allow the body to soften and relax. Noticing this infinite space between structures, between layers, between muscles and bones and organs.
as you continue to observe your stretch, making sure the breath is present. Breathing as deeply or as quietly as you'd like. Sometimes within these yin stretches, we arrive into not necessarily structure, not necessarily boundlessness. Sometimes it's this ambiguous space. It's the space in between. And the actual word to describe that is liminal. We arrive into this liminal space. aware of our body, but also within our awareness, noticing consciousness. When you fall into that meditative state or that meditative focus. Mesmerized by the presence within the body. We'll take a few more breaths exactly where you are. And then from here, you can choose to stay in dove a little longer or very gently, you'll begin to lower the arms down. Your left hand might help this left thigh release a little bit. And then you'll watch yourself or observe yourself unraveling the body naturally. Legs can go in any direction. Arms might want to stretch up above the head. And even if it feels good, you can hug the knees into the chest and rock side to side. And you're just moving in any which way. Sometimes the body's going to guide you into specific counter movements that feel natural, like when you speak a language. Eventually, you stop thinking about where the verb goes, where the noun goes, where the adjective goes, and it flows because you can feel it. So we feel into that language of the body by taking those counter movements, whatever they are, and then we're going to pause in rebound. Whether you stay on your back, you might be in child's pose, you might be seated, but you'll find that place to take a moment. Letting yourself observe, feeling that subtle sensation contract back, like the fascia contracting back to all those places it was stretching. Letting yourself soften, even in your rebound pose. And then 
from here, you can choose to stay a little longer or you're welcome to find Dove on the right side. So depending on where you were in rebound, you might take a few little movements, maybe even windshield wiper the knees for a moment or stretch the arms until you come back to lay down. Knees will be bent, feet flat to the floor. We're gonna open the right knee out to the side. And then this time you can keep your right foot where it is or you can walk that right foot underneath you as much as you'd like. And remember, you're never stuck. So in the event that the body's gonna guide you differently after a few breaths, just take those adjustments. If you ever wanna come out of a pose sooner, allow yourself to do that and we'll all meet in rebound. But once you're ready, once you've found stillness, reclosing the eyes. Relaxing your hands and arms. You'll continue to Allow the body to relax within this shape. Letting go of unnecessary tension. Letting go of unnecessary control. Noticing any clenching or gripping. We'll patiently release into those places. Softening within the body lets us redefine what structure means. Because any knots or tanglements of tissue might be quote unquote, a structure, a form, a mass of some sort. But is that the type of structure we want to carry? And so from time to time, you'll check in with the breath. From time to time, check in with the gaze at the backs of the eyelids. What ways does the structure and foundation of stillness support that infinite space of the quiet?
And we'll take a few more breaths exactly where we are. And then from here, if you'd like to stay a little longer, you're more than welcome to. Or whenever you're ready, we'll slowly begin to release from the shape. So your hands might come down, your right hand might help the right thigh release. And your eyes can be closed, your gaze can be soft even. Just try not to look at anything specific allowing ourselves to just organically move, whether these counter movements look similar to a yoga pose or just something natural in the body. Like when you wake up in the morning to stretch, you take your first yawn. But once you feel that the body has released from that stillness, with those transitional movements, we'll come into our meditative pause of rebound. Feeling the subtle sensations of the fascia contracting back. Noticing any expansions within the breath. Even noticing the way the Nervous system can recalibrate. Now, if you would like to stay here and rebound a little longer, you're more than welcome to. But if you're interested in Joining the next sensation or the next stretch will gently awaken from rebound. One more time, we might hug the knees into the chest, but eventually we're gonna all come back up to sit if you're not already. You might roll to one side of the body and gently press up to sit. Okay, I'm gonna teach us uh, we're going to come into a back-to-back -back stretch. We're going to come into two poses back-to-back -back, and then take rebound. The second stretch is something that I've, we've done before in our yin classes, but the first stretch is something that I haven't taught you yet. So we're going to move into a new stretch, and then that will transition us into something that we're a little bit more familiar with. So that first stretch, I like to call bowing dragon. And bowing dragon is gonna take us into dragon. Now, if you're not sure of what dragon looks like yet, sometimes in vinyasa, people call it lizard, but in yin, we call it dragon. Okay, so in terms of the bowing dragon, you're gonna allow, I'll show this at different angles, but your right knee is bent as you start to sit back on your right heel, your left foot comes forward here. Right? And then you might find your blocks, that right knee might open out a little bit, and I mean, you can take this as low as you'd like, whether you're using blocks or pillows or blankets. Now I'm gonna show it this way too. So your right knee is bent and your left foot comes up, right? We're gonna stay here within this bowing dragon shape. Your left toes might point forward, might point on a diagonal. You might even walk this foot out wide. It almost feels like a malasana, essentially. One more angle here. As you sit down on that right heel, so this angle, if you want to take a blanket or a pillow to prop between your, group, your glute and your heel, that's fine. And then you're still within the bowing dragon shape. After bowing dragon, we're gonna walk forward, palms come down, step that left foot forward, and now we're in actual dragon. Okay? <laughs> so just to see it from the other side, 
We're going to be in bowing dragon, right? And then we're going to come forward, step that left foot forward. Now we're in dragon completely, right? Or you might, you know, come to your forearms again, walk the toes out, prop that back knee, et cetera. So I can talk a little bit more about dragon once we get there, but just so you know, that's going to be the progression. We'll start in bowing dragon, move forward. Now, like I said, because we haven't done bowing dragon yet, go into it and then if you want to readjust readjust right take your time and then if you have a question please you're more than welcome to ask it's not an interruption so finding the best props to support the front part of the body again if you want to support that back glute and heel you're welcome to and never feel like you have to be uh, fully straight, you know? So if you lean a little bit to the left or if you curve a little bit to the right, totally fine. Right? That's the point of the practice. We can steer the stretch as we arrive into the body at different angles. Oh, I know we're in it, but I, I forgot to, to say something that I wanted to suggest. So stay where you are. I have the timer going, but I'm going to explain something. In the event that that right knee feels a little tight in between the back of the calf and the back of the thigh, you can take a thin layer of blanket and snug it in between the crevice of the knee. And then as you sit back down, that might feel a little bit more supportive to that right knee if it's uncomfortable being bent. Okay, and whether that serves you today or maybe another day in the practice. Now I'm done, so I'll be quiet. <laughs> Beginning to arrive fully, softening when you're ready. Letting go of unnecessary tension and unnecessary control. Take your time as you soften into the entire front body, into the entire back body. Now you might be using your forearms in some way to help support you, but by no means do you have to be clenched. Using that structure and foundation, but not inhibiting it, not creating unnecessary force or tension. Continue to let the breath flourish. If you'd like to stay here in Bowing Dragon, you're more than welcome to stay. However, if you choose to transition into Dragon, you're gonna to begin to press down into the floor. You'll slowly walk your palms forward. You're gonna step that left foot outside of the left pinky finger. You might reposition that back right knee, maybe a blanket underneath it and such. Your hands and forearms might be on some blocks or some pillows. And then again, you'll lower the forehead down. Yeah. In the event that you don't want to stay in dragon, you can travel back to bowing dragon and just lower down towards that back right heel again. Your choice, so just notice the adaptable skill set to the body. 
continuing to soften, nervous system functioning in a more natural state. And in the event that the nervous system does get stimulated, maybe you can listen in a little more closely to understand why. Maybe it's necessary to breathe a little more. Maybe it's necessary to readjust or come out of the pose entirely. Maybe the awareness needs to shift for a moment to perceive something new. A few more breaths exactly where you are. Whenever you're ready, no rush. We'll gently begin to press down into the floor or into your props. You'll begin to straighten the arms as you lift the chest. Right? You wanna move slow out of this. You might even hinge the hips back so that you can straighten that left leg like a wide half anuman, if that feels good. You might continue to hinge forward and step the legs back. Maybe you Straighten them and rock into the calf a little bit, one leg at a time. You know, or maybe you're moving in cat-cow, maybe you're in down dog, straightening the legs at the same time. But of course, as you unravel, taking any counter movements that feel most supportive to the body's experience, Eventually, within your own time, you'll find that space to rebound. Supporting the physical structure of the body while also supporting that vast, infinite space. Noticing and observing and reflecting. And taking a moment to soften even within your rebound shape. If you'd like to stay here a little longer, you're more than welcome to stay. But whenever you're ready, you'll press down into the floor. We might take a few other movements as we awaken from rebound and then we'll transition, no rush, into bowing dragon on the right side. And then from bowing dragon, we'll transition into dragon. So in case you want to keep other props close by that you'll know you'll want to use, you're welcome to it. Okay, so then as we come to sit back on our left heel, right foot comes forward. And again, those different ideas with the blanket, whether you're propping underneath that left knee, maybe you're propping it in between your glute and your heel. Or again, maybe you move the muscle of the calf and you find a thin layer of blanket just to kind of snuggle in between 
that back knee. And then as you lower, that's create a little bit more of a breathing space as you arrive into the stretch. And again, the sensation of bowing dragon, the right foot toes can point forward, toes can point on a diagonal. You can walk the hip open as wide as you'd like. You can even come to the blade of the foot if you want. And even this bowing dragon shape having somewhat of the sensations of malasana or yogi squat. Noticing if the forearms, forehead should have a prop underneath just to be a little more supportive. And then we'll close the eyes. Beginning to breathe into the experience, softening when helpful. And as you take your time letting go of unnecessary tension, letting go of unnecessary control, you not only feel the tissue and the fascia relaxing, but it's almost as if it's uncoiling from within that knot or tanglement. rewiring itself, creating a more optimal foundation or optimal structure. To hold experiences for this liminal space that we arrive into. We'll spend a few more breaths here in Bowing Dragon. Notice the sensations, the steadiness of them, the ability for them to shift. And of course, if you'd like to stay exactly where you are, you can stay here to stretch. Or you'll gently press down into the floor, lifting through the head and chest as we walk ourselves forward to come into dragon. So we'll unbend that back knee a little bit, stepping the right foot outside of the right hand. You might stay here at the palms or again, lower down to blocks or pillows or bolsters. As you lower, if you want to walk this right foot out a little bit farther, you can. Toes pointing in any direction, maybe arch of the foot lifting slightly. Just doing what's best for the body, but not fighting the body. Just with a slight change or shift of awareness, we might take the time to soften again. You might not notice all the places that the body grips or holds. But as we allow our awareness to travel through the many layers, we patiently 
ask ourselves to release. And as we release, we allow ourselves to receive. Staying patient here. Now you can only always, always choose to stay a little longer. But if you're choosing to release you might slowly press down so that we can come back to the palms. In the event that you're in full dragon, you might allow the hips to extend back, straightening that leg, feeling like half Anuman. Right, but you might do something different here as well. Right? Extending that right leg behind you, you might rock into the hips. You might tuck your toes and reach the hips back for down dog. Or maybe you do none of that and you just arrive into rebound. It'll always be different based on time of day, based on how you feel. So there's no right or wrong. But as you come back into stillness, just taking a moment to pause. And feeling the echoes of the fascia, the reverberations of the stretch. In the same way you pluck a guitar string right, or you pluck the, I don't know if it's called a violin string or a chord for a violin, but you get the point. There's that reverberation, right? That back and forth sway. And we can view the tissue of the fascia as that as well. So if you'd like to stay here and rebound a little longer, you're more than welcome to do so. Or when you're ready, we'll gently press down, coming back to a seated shape. However you'd like to get there, we're gonna transition into open wing, so we're gonna go to the belly anyway, but you know, feel free to take your time. For open wing, you might find a pillow or a blanket to support the head. Once we come to the belly, the left arm is gonna open out to T. So as you lay down, you're on your chest, left arm opens out to T so that you can roll into that shoulder. So if I were to bring my arm out to T, roll into the left shoulder so that the right hip is on top. And then your right palm might first stay in front of the chest just to support you. Knees can be in the chest there, legs can go long. You might even drop the right leg behind you and bend the knee like a kickstand. But of course that foot can stay behind the left thigh or in front of the left thigh, just doing whatever's best for that hip. So finding your open wing. With the left arm behind you, your right hand can stay relaxed in front of the chest or you might lift it up and take a half bind around the low back. So taking any variation here to begin, you can always change variations as the body guides you. 
We, we don't want to jump into sensation. We don't want too much intensity too quickly. But allow it to be gradual. You can always move into less or more depending on what you need today. And then of course, no rush, we'll close the eyes. Arrive into stillness. The stillness facilitating this orchestra of sensation within the body. You might feel stretch in one place, another place, multiple places. But helping to release that sensation or to release and support that stretch of fascia will be relaxing into the space. If you're squinting your eyes or clenching your jaw, even squeezing the shoulders, can we soften into the skin? And as you continue to relax from the outer layer of your body to the mid and inner layers, noticing this reclaimed space. There's this reclaimed space of fascia, allowing us to feel longer. creating more length within the body. There's also reclaimed space to allow ourselves to breathe. More space for us to think and feel rather than feeling cluttered within the body's structure. few more breaths exactly where you are. We'll keep the left arm still. If the right arm is bounded back behind you, we'll gently reach it up to the ceiling. It'll travel back in front of the heart. If the legs are apart, guide one leg back on top of the other until you can take your time and roll out of the left shoulder and onto the belly. Letting your arms rest above you, snuggled underneath you, or back behind the hips. And it may feel good to kick the feet up and windshield wiper the knees. It may feel good to plant the palms underneath you and you'll pull your heart forward, extending the spine and maybe reaching the hips all the way back to child's pose. It may feel good to stay exactly where you are or to do something different. And 
and then we'll be arriving into our rebound, the moment where we can resonate with the previous stretch, feel the imprint. The imprint of that experience almost melting or seeping into the belly of the tissue. Take another moment to soften in your rebound. And then if you'd like to stay here a little longer, you're more than welcome to. If you're ready for open wing on the right side, allow yourself to maybe take a movement or two, readjust the body wherever you may need. And then we'll settle into open wing on the right. Right arm coming out to T, rolling into the right shoulder. Or if you've started with the right arm, you'll just do the left, so no big deal. Taking any variation with the legs. And then at that opposite arm, maybe it's the left. It might stay in front of you or reach up and around the low back to take a half bind. Beginning to arrive. And just noticing what presents itself. Rather than our desires dictating to the body what we think we should feel, we allow ourselves to fully arrive into that present experience. Fully feeling whatever the body, mind, or heart expresses. And a lot of that brings us into that liminal space, that this ambiguous space of not being here or there. We know logically that the fascia is stretching. We can list off all the benefits to the body with the fascia stretching. But what may not be able to be described so easily is that meditative focus or meditative experience that is facilitated.
Checking in with the breath. And checking in with the gaze at the backs of the eyelids. And then from here, we'll keep that right arm still. If the left arm is behind the back, we'll gently reach that arm up to the ceiling, bringing it back down in front of us, guiding one leg on top of the other, and you'll help yourself slowly roll out of the shoulder. Maybe bringing your forehead down or turning to a cheek. Letting the arms rest wherever is most comfortable, as we might find a few of those intuitive movements. The rocking of the hips, the swaying of the knees, the extension of the spine. Maybe that child's pose or tabletop shape that intrigues the body. And of course, you'll find that moment to rebound. And the experience of the stretch is not fully over until we finish rebound. Softening for another moment within that liminal space. And then if you'd like to stay here a little longer, you're welcome to stay. Or you can gently press down into the floor and we'll come back to a seated shape. No rush to get there. You can take any movements. But then we're going to prep ourselves for a forward fold. So from our forward fold, I'll let you choose some options, but in a forward fold, if you'd like to prop your tailbone, you're welcome to take a blanket or a pillow. You can choose caterpillar where we straighten our legs. You might find your blocks and your pillows and things around you as you fold in caterpillar. Or you might choose to take dragonfly where the legs are in a V. And then you're still going to find that building of props to support as you fold. And you can stack your props, of course however you'd like, no right or wrong way to do that. Blocks on the bottom, blocks on the top, bolsters, pillows. In the event that you don't want to forward fold too much and round the spine, you might just wrap your pillows and things around your body and let your forearms hang over. Chin can always be kept neutral or you can lower the chin and let the head be heavy. And maybe trying a couple of these variations throughout your time. Okay, so choosing dragonfly with the legs into a V or choosing caterpillar with the legs straight out in front of you. No better or worse. And then when you're ready, you'll close your eyes. Arrive into stillness. 
and begin to observe. Sometimes you'll feel sensations in one leg more than the other. And it's not something that you have to fix by any means. The best way we can support ourselves is through the softening. The letting go of unnecessary tension. The letting go of unnecessary control. And continuing to listen to the breath, letting it guide you or mentor you through the experience of sensation. A few more breaths exactly where you are. And then within your dragonfly or within your caterpillar, you might take one or two more cycles of breath. And then within your own time, you can gently press down into the floor or into your props. You'll start to lift the head and chest, no rush. And then from there, you might be moving some props out of the way. You might be guiding your legs towards you, maybe even to help cross the shins. We didn't do any twists today. So if you feel like you wanna twist for a moment over the left thigh and over the right thigh, you're welcome to find those counter movements there. Breathing into the side body really just taking any other final movements. Our final full rebound, it will be our space for Shavasana. So if the body wants to take any other movements first before coming to stillness, you're welcome to it. And then from there, we'll begin to prep ourselves. So if you wanna take Shavasana on the back, on the belly, on your side body, you choose what works for you. You might find some props though, if you wanna take a pillow for the head, if that's comfortable. You might find a pillow or blanket to you know, prop the backs of the knees if that also feels supportive to your, to your spine. And then if you're feeling a little cool or you just want a little extra grounding supportive weight, you might find a pillow or blanket to rest, whether it's covering the whole entire body or just the lower body, doing what's best for you. So no rush to this, but as you come back to find that Shavasana space, laying down in any particular shape, you know, one more time, allowing the legs and the feet to soften, 
One more time, allowing the arms and hands to soften. As you take that sweep of consciousness to release into the entire body as a whole. Reflecting and absorbing our experience of practice. We'll welcome ourselves to Shavasana. Very gently, we'll begin to deepen our breath. 
And slowly arriving back into the space of our bodies, into the space of our rooms, and into the room we energetically share. Taking a moment here. To begin to awaken through the hands and feet. You might roll into the wrists and ankles. Wiggle within the fingers and toes. When you're ready for a little more movement, you can reach the arms up and above the head to take a full body stretch. You might bend into the knees and windshield wipe them from side to side if it feels good to awaken through the hips and torso. From there, you might hug the knees into the chest and wrap around the shins or wrap around the backs of the thighs. But then of course, within your own time, you'll roll either to the left or right side of the body. If it feels good, you can stay there or you might press down into the floor and walk back to a seated shape. However you'd like to end your practice, we'll reclose the eyes in case they've opened and again, gravitate back to stillness. That moment of reflection as you notice the natural lift within the body, the expansion of the breath and the clarity within the heart or mind. You might keep your hands relaxed or you might bring them into a prayer shape at heart center. We'll close our practice maybe with the cleansing breath or with the sound of Om, but together taking a deep breath in. very gently bowing the chin towards the chest. Thank you for practicing with me this evening, being elevated through yoga. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the four of you.